Brugada syndrome is another electrical disorder that is hereditary. The term Brugada comes from the three brothers that coined this term. There are three brothers, all cardiologists. And, uh, one lives in America, the other in Spain, I believe, and the other one somewhere in South America. But these brothers noticed that they were seeing sudden deaths and they've noticed a very classic electrical pattern in people who would survive sudden deaths. Further research into this um, brought out very important information and showed us that Brugada syndrome is yet another ion channel disorder, something that I've just talked about in the context of long QT syndrome. Here, there is a defective sodium ion channel. The sodium ion channel is defective and the condition is hereditary inherited as an autosomal dominant trait. So if a parent's got it, there's a 50% chance they will pass it on to the offspring. Brugada syndrome is a condition that we are still learning a lot about. So what I say now is our current understanding, but it may not be comprehensive and it may not be entirely accurate. The prevalence of this condition is about one in 5,000. But there are very few deaths from Brugada syndrome that we're aware of. Well, if we look at our SADS families, our pickup rate for Brugada in these SADS families, bearing in mind there are about 500, 600 SADS families, we pick up a handful of Brugada families here. But if you imagine that the prevalence of this condition is 1 in 5,000, we'd expect loads and loads of deaths in young people. So uh, although the prevalence is high, not, not everybody dies from it, only a small proportion of people die. The next question is, so who dies? It has a male predilection. Males are far more at risk of dying. If you look at the literature, the literature suggests that the male to female death ratio is 9 to 1. Our personal experience with cry in our cry clinics is about 2 to 1. So we're learning again. See, our experience is very different to um, the general worldwide experience. The second thing is that most people with Brugada syndrome do not have symptoms at all. Most of the people that we see that have died have never blacked out, never had palpitation or dizziness. So that's important as well. The third point is when you do diagnose it with this special ECG pattern which shows a right bundle branch block with coved ST segment elevation which I'll illustrate later, what do you do? because we can't predict risk necessarily, we don't know who will die, we also know not everybody dies, but we have, to be, we have to have a practical algorithm. Currently the understanding is there is only one treatment for this condition, that is a defibrillator, so it's an all or none response. Someone's either treated with a defibrillator or they don't get any pills or defibrillators. Who gets the defibrillator? Well, it's the person that's blacking out without warning, one. It's the person that's already survived a sudden death, two, and it's a person that's already got the spontaneous abnormal ECG pattern. This brings me to another point. Not everybody with the Brugada syndrome has the ECG that we, that we look for. In some people, we have to actually bring this out by giving them a chemical called agmaline or flecainide, which are drugs that block artificially the sodium ion channels. And by blocking sodium ion channels, we may show up the Brugada pattern. But it's not those people that we believe are at risk. It's those people that have the sporadic Brugada ECG pattern without us doing it chemically. So people with a sporadic pattern, survivors of sudden death, blackouts without warning get the defibrillators. The others get very important lifestyle modification. The first is that they must, they must avoid certain antidepressants, the tricyclic antidepressants. For those of you watching this, uh, I should inform you that these are not the classic antidepressants that we use now, such as fluoxetine or sertraline. These are in common use and are not contraindicated in the Brugada syndrome. The second thing that one must avoid, uh, especially if someone's got epilepsy, and this is very relevant because not everybody with epilepsy has actually got epilepsy, they may have a cardiac problem. But there are certain anti-epileptic drugs, such as phenytoin, that should be avoided in the Brugada syndrome. The third thing is if someone's got a mental disorder, like schizophrenia, Drugs such as phenothiazines, which are commonly used in schizophrenia, should be avoided in the Brugada syndrome. Illicit drugs such as cocaine, amphetamine and speed are a no-no and can cause fatal rhythm disturbances. And finally, there have been observations that high temperatures can spark off bad rhythm disturbances people affected with Brugada syndrome. Now, when you and I get, are affected with a cold once a year, 
we tend to ignore it and see it through. We have a bit of a sweat and think, okay, we'll get better, I'll stay in bed for a night. But in people who may be affected with Brugada, I would urge to monitor their temperature and do not allow the temperature to go above 38 degrees. So if it's climbing at 37.5, 37.6, I would suggest that they take a gram of paracetamol earlier rather than later. As with all the other conditions I've just talked about, this is a genetic disorder, but the genetics of Brugada syndrome are in their embryonic stages. Currently, if we screen for mutations in the sodium ion channel, the diagnostic yield is only 20%. So we continue to rely on clinical methods of diagnosis, diagnosing this condition rather than genetic methods, but I understand that genetic screening from Brugada, for Brugada is improving and the situation may be completely different in the next five or six years. It's much more common in the Far East, a place like Nepal and Thailand, uh, where there's a, there's a much higher prevalence rate and a higher event rate, high, higher death rate, such that it's known as a curse that's taken young boys away during their sleep. And it's traditional for mothers to dress their young boys in female clothing until they've got older to protect them from this curse that will steal them, steal their souls in the middle of the night. It's well-known practice.